What do you think will happen to the frictional force experienced by this object if we increase the angle? Will it also increase or will it decrease? Those are one of the questions you are most likely to come across in the exam. But before you see me answer that question, just leave a comment and let me know what you think. If we increase the angle, will the frictional force experienced by the object increase or decrease? And why are you saying so? Just leave a comment and let me know. Taking a look at the first question, 3.1, define the term static frictional force. Nothing hectic, we just reciting the definition as it is from the exam guidelines. So static frictional force is the force that opposes the tendency of motion of a stationary object relative to a surface. You state it like that the static frictional force is the force that opposes the tendency of a motion of a stationary object relative to your surface. So that is 3.1. Let's go ahead and take a look at 3.2. Draw a labeled free body diagram of all the forces acting on the trolley at the top of the ramp, just as it starts to roll down the ramp. So let's go ahead and take a look. National building regulations for trolley and wheelchair ramps specify that the ramp must be 6 meters in length while the angle of the ramp must be 4.76 degrees. The combined mass of the trolley and its contents is 80 kg. The coefficient of static frictional the coefficient of static friction between the wheels of the trolley and the ramp is 0 0.1. So there we go. That's the information we have. How do we then draw our free body diagram? Let's go ahead and take a look. So before we even start thinking about anything else, we know for sure that we have the weight, right? So let's go ahead and have that. The weight points straight downwards, irregardless of the situation you have. So we have the weight. The object is resting on a surface. So we should have a normal force perpendicular to the surface. So there we go. It is the level free body diagram for all the forces just as it starts to roll down the ramp. When it rolls down, obviously, we have the frictional force in the opposite direction, right? Maybe we can talk about why the frictional force will be pointing upwards. So let me just label these forces first, and then we will address that. So we have the weight, the normal force, and you are seeing that the frictional force is pointing up the incline. So why are we saying that the frictional force is pointing up the incline why is this the case let's talk about that so the normal force is perpendicular to the surface so it plays no role on the parallel motion of the object relative to the surface what plays a role is the weight and why am i saying so we can resolve the weight into its parallel component and its perpendicular component by looking at this you can see clearly that the weight parallel is down the incline and the object or the trolley rather will be moving down the incline because of that force there's no other opposing force so it will move down the incline right so that is why we are saying that frictional force is up the incline because weight parallel is down the incline and it's the only force that is doing work on our object down the incline or along the horizontal axis. That is 3.2. And 3.3, while the trolley is at the top of the ramp, calculate the magnitude of the maximum force of static friction. So if we want frictional force, we take the coefficient and multiply it by the normal force. The coefficient is 0 0.1. It is given to us in the equation statement. Here it is. So we just need to calculate the normal force. In an inclined surface, the normal force is mg cos of theta. So the frictional force will be the coefficient multiplied by mg cos of theta. Right. If you don't understand where this is coming from, Go ahead and watch my video on how to calculate normal force on different cases. That's probably one of the most important videos I've ever made. 
right anyway let's go ahead and substitute the coefficient is 0 0.1 multiplied by the normal force the mass is 80 kgs gravitational acceleration 9.8 multiplied by cos of let me open brackets cos of 4.76 degrees now it's just a matter of putting that in your calculator and you should get 78.13 newtons sometimes when you substitute you can make a mistake so if you can well you always can uh, substitute twice in the calculator put those things twice in the calculator and just see if you get the same answer so 78.13 newtons right i'm still getting the same answer so now i'm confident that my substitution was correct and now the interesting question this is the question we are really interested in right if the ramp is longer than six meters a less steep gradient is required for a ramp of a less steep gradient state whether the following would increase decrease or remain the same if it is less steep right our angle this 4.76 it decreases if our ramp is to be less steep so we are saying what will happen to the coefficient of static friction and the force of static friction if theta decreases right you need to understand what the consequence of a less steep gradient will imply theta decreases so the coefficient of static friction the coefficient of static friction remains the same remains the same and why do we say so we're saying so because we know fully well that it is dependent on the material used if you want to change the coefficient of static friction you change the material right if the material is still the same if it still have the same surface then the coefficient of static friction remains the same and then now let's talk about the force of static friction let's go ahead and take a look we know that it is given by the coefficient multiplied by the normal force of which we have the coefficient multiplied by the mass multiplied by gravity multiplied by cos of theta so take a look at this we know that the coefficient will stay the same the mass stays the same the gravitational acceleration stays the same so it's up to cos of theta to be quite honest right well let me not say to be quite honest like i would lie obviously what i'm saying is true it is scientific you can see in front of you that what is affecting the frictional force is the angle the coefficient the mass and the gravity will remain the same so when the angle decreases what will happen to you? cos of theta well cos of zero is one and cos of 90 is zero so as the angle decreases cos of theta increases right so we can see here that uh, the force of static friction increases and why do we say that it will increase because the normal force increases normal force increases right because this is the normal force and as the angle decreases the normal force will increase as cos of theta increases with a decrease in theta so there we go we have answered the question did you get it right or did you make a mistake some way somehow if you got it wrong i hope you see the mistake you made or the misconception you had and now you have a bit of clarity